What's up guys? Matt here back. It's Monday and it's time to dig into God's Word. Um, hopefully you're able to, uh, to, to read these passages here uh, on the screen. We've got uh, Judges uh, chapter 8. We're going to start here in verse 9, or 18 actually. Judges chapter 8 uh, verse 18 and then goes through uh, chapter 9 verse uh, 21 as well. Um, but again, we see the end of Gideon. Um, and he passed the baton, kind of, uh, to his son, um, Abimelech. But we see Gideon here. Uh, he's done some great things. He's been a great and courageous person. Even though he was sheepish at the beginning, he, he put his trust in God. And, and God delivered, him, delivered uh, Gideon with his 300 men to all these other nations uh, that had uh, thousands and thousands of people. Um, and then he, he has a kind of right response here at the end. Um, in verse 22, uh, the people of Israel are like, hey, we want you to be our king. And Gideon says, no, 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 I don't need to be your king. Uh, God is your king. Oh, we shouldn't put a man in place uh, of God. God should be your king. But um, I'll take some of your money if, uh, if you want to give me something. And so he asks him for some jewelry. He gets tons of gold. And he sets up this little uh, ephod, which was like a, basically like what the priests would wear. Um, it was a special, uh, a special uh, garment, if you will, that they would they would put over their chest, and uh, so he makes this this uh, thing out of all the the money that the people give him, um, and then uh, Israel ends up worshiping this uh, golden thing as an idol, and then it kind of backfires on Gideon. And uh, again, like I told you, he was not perfect by any means. He made some mistakes, uh, but you make mistakes, uh, I make mistakes. And a good reminder for us that there's no such thing as a perfect leader. And uh, Gideon was not that perfect leader. Um, and so then he dies. The people of Israel, they go back into sin. They fall back into compromise. Um, and then his son, Abimelech, one of his sons, he had a lot of sons because he had a lot, a lot, a lot of wives. Um, but uh, one of his sons, Abimelech, he uh, was like, hey, uh, I kind of want to be in charge now. Uh, my dad's pretty special, so I want to be in charge now. Uh, can I be the king? And uh, so he goes around. He starts spreading rumors. Uh, his his buddy Jothan he he says this big long uh, big long parable about uh, how Abimelech just try to get power, and then he runs away by the end of it. Um, again, Israel is going through a rough time right now. They are going uh, riding high, and then they ride really low, um, and they they fall right into sin, and uh, it's. It's not pretty. It's honestly not pretty. And, and Abimelech trying to get power off of his dad uh, and uh, try to become king, even though his dad was like, no, I don't want to be king. I want God to be the king. Uh, Gideon had a lot of right decisions, some wrong decisions. Abimelech, all wrong decisions. And we're going to see tomorrow how that kind of backfires on Abimelech. Uh, but anyway, let's turn over to a more familiar passage here. Luke chapter 23. We're going to read uh, the... Uh, well, the end of the crucifixion. Um, we're going to read about here the death of Jesus and then also his burial and then his resurrection. Um, so right there, you get all the components really of the gospel, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Um, right there, that's the core of the gospel message that Jesus did that for your sake and for mine uh, so that he would uh, die in your place, be your substitute, and then rise again. Uh, again, keep saying this every day. I know this is a familiar story to you, but don't let the familiarity jade your, your view of how amazing this is. The fact that Jesus died and the fact that Jesus rose again isn't just some story that we teach kids uh, on a weekend service um, in the kids ministry at Compass Bible Church. No, this is something that is important for kids and important for teenagers, important for adults. This is the crux of of human history right here that Jesus died, was buried, and was and rose again on the third day. Um, so hopefully that's something that you can rejoice in today, that Jesus did that for you. Uh, you could spend some extra time maybe in prayer today about how amazing that, that gift uh, that Jesus gave to you. Um, so again, that was uh, Luke chapter 23 and uh, first couple verses of 24, which we read a couple weeks ago on Easter. But now let's go over to Psalm 99. Psalm 99, again, another psalm of, of praise uh, for God, praising him how, how high and how lifted he, 
how lifted up he is. Uh, verse 5 says, Exalt the Lord our God, worship him at his footstool. Again, there's a view that uh, if, if worshiping God at his footstool means you are down at his feet and you are looking up at how great he is. That's the picture that you need to have of God, that he is high, he is lifted up, he is way higher than you can even imagine right now. Your job is to sit at his, his footstool with with fear and trembling and worshiping him because he is so amazing. He is so great. You need to be doing that with your life, humbly submitting yourself to God and praising him with your life and with your lips. So a good reminder from Psalm 99. Now let's get a couple verses here from the book of Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs chapter 14. I think we got verse 9 and 10 here today, but it says, fools mock at the guilt offering, but the upright enjoy acceptance. The heart knows its own bitterness and no stranger shares its joy. I think that's a a good verse right there at verse 9. Fools mock at the guilt offering, but the upright enjoys acceptance. Again, what we do by going to God, asking for forgiveness, that is a mockery to people. Um, People think that is ridiculous, that that we can sin and, and God forgives us of sin. How, how does that make any sense? Um, I've talked with non-Christians about this and they say that doesn't make any sense because Christians, you ask for forgiveness and then you go back and you do it again. And I say, that's not my intention. That is not my goal. I, I, I want to run from sin. But God is a gracious God and it doesn't make sense to the fool. They mock at that. They think it's ridiculous that you can go before God in confession and, and, and asking God for forgiveness and, and going to him in repentance uh, and God can forgive you of that. That's a, that's a joke to, to many people. But an amazing gift that we can celebrate here today that when you go before God with a guilt offering, that's what they would do in the Old Testament when they would sin. But in the New Testament, we see that First uh, John 1.9 says that, that if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can do that right now with your sin. That is a gift, and the only reason you can do that is because what we just read in Luke 23 and Luke 24, that, that Jesus died and rose again so that he could open up the curtain, if you will, between you and God, so that now you can have a mediator, someone in between you and God, so that you can ask for that forgiveness, and God just doesn't wipe your sin like, oh, whatever, doesn't matter. No, God cares about your sin. The only reason he can say, I forgive you of your sin, is because Jesus died as that guilt offering as that sin offering, so that you can go free. So let's celebrate that, that guilt offering today. Let's praise God. It doesn't make sense to fools, but, but it's an amazing gift for us to celebrate here today. So hopefully you take that today. Hopefully you read right now, um, opening up Judges, Luke, Psalms, and Proverbs, and uh, you're able to take what you're learning. You're able to understand a little better and apply it to your life. So we'll see you again tomorrow for another edition of Every Day in the Word.